the likelihood is that if you're applying to a competitive university, they will have competitive applicants, people with all A stars, an amazing UCAT score, all the work experience in the world, and a good personal statement. So if you're competing, you really don't have any chance to slack anywhere in your application. Regardless, I'll tell you everything you need to know and let's get into it. So let's start with a section that you can easily spend most of your time perfecting, the introduction and conclusion. The admissions team will have hundreds if not thousands of personal statements to read and your job is to one, not be boring, two, to be easy to read, so flow and structure, and three, to be memorable, which is your holy trinity. So what you're going for is you're trying to create an impact, you're trying to catch their attention. At the same time, you don't want to be fluffy and waffly, you want it to be concise and simple. I'll talk more about structure and flow in a second, but to begin with, let's go through introductions. So obviously people usually start with their why, why do they want to do dentistry, what intrigued them, what put them on this path. It has to be like a very personal, deep, impactful kind of situation story that you're going to be talking about. Or if you don't have a deep, meaningful reason for why you want to do dentistry, you can maybe do like a deep, meaningful experience and then tie that into how this is the perfect career for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to writing the introduction. You don't need to write something that nobody has ever heard of before because, you know, that's very hard to do. What you do need to do is you want it to be personal, you want it to be meaningful, you want it to be very impactful. You don't want to say something like, oh, you know, ever since I had braces, it improved my confidence, which, you know, made me want to become a dentist and stuff like that. Because literally every single person who has had braces has said that. Even people who haven't had braces have said that in that introduction. And it's old and it's, you know, they've seen that before. Then that's not memorable. Even like a simple experience which is well written sounds really good now I will have another video coming out soon which has like worked examples of personal statements I've been proofreading personal statements for so 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 long and I've been talking to admissions team members and stuff like that and I've asked from some of my students from last year who have got accepted into dental school or medical school if I can use their personal statements in the next video so I will like annotate through like personal statements and go through them and what's good and what's bad about it and stuff like that so you have an idea of what you need to write so yeah that could be really helpful subscribe so you don't miss out um, um, and yeah, I'll have that coming up soon. So this is addressing the second point in the Holy Trinity, which is making it easy to read. Now this is something that so many people overlook, which it's so important because you want it to flow like a story. You want it to be easy to read, but still gripping at the same time. So the first thing I recommend people to do is to not use overly decorative words, because the only thing that this does is ruins the flow and makes it harder for the reader. Now you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you have good experience, it speaks for itself. You don't need to dress it up. You can't dress up bad experience because it will be bad no matter what. What you want to do is you want to be impressive with the content, you don't want to be impressive by the like really long and obscure words. What you want to do is, obviously I'm not saying use the F3 language, but don't use words that you wouldn't usually use that sound really hard to read, you don't even know how to say it kind of thing. Another really useful test is to have someone read it who's never read it before out loud and this is really really important because you can judge things like is it easy to read, are the concepts jumping from place to place, does it sound like a list and stuff like that because these are all important indications that the personal statement isn't reading like it should. And following on from that point, you want to make sure that it doesn't sound like a list. Each paragraph should not be a new work experience. You should kind of seamlessly mesh the work experiences together with like experiences and reflections and stuff like that. And I'll talk more about this in a second, but I think if you fall into this trap, it can very easily just look like a tick box exercise and not like you have genuinely created and cultivated these experiences and skills. So one trick that some people use is that they, at the end of their paragraph, would have a sentence that links into the start of the next paragraph. Now, I would use this with caution because sometimes when you have just like two random sentences that can't like they link together but they don't link to the rest of the paragraph that makes it glaringly obvious that there is not flow so kind of use this with caution but some people use this and it works really well you kind of want to just tie everything all together and relate all of your experiences back to dentistry or medicine whichever one you're applying for so what do they want to see in your personal statement a checkbox for all of the things you need to include so obviously the first thing is they want to see what is your motivation for dentistry why do you want to do dentistry why is it your career choice what about it intrigues you why do you think you are a good fit to be a dentist all of these things and if you're a postgraduate you want to think about what is it about this career that is different to your you know previous career Career path and why is this a better career for you what about your previous job limited you or frustrated you whatever that dentistry is a better fit for you and obviously they want to hear about your work experience but more importantly how you reflected on these experiences so what about being a leader in the basketball team made you like a fit for dentistry you kind of have to relate everything back to dentistry but also you have to think about you can't just say okay being in the basketball team made me a great leader blah 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 you want to talk about like specific challenges that you had and stuff like that because if you just like 
lists these things like okay being a basketball team leadership also communication skills all of that stuff it doesn't sound genuine you want to talk about specific things like for example this one time that you were losing and you know one of your players had to come off there was somebody had an injury or something like that and you really had to like be under pressure and stuff like that and that really ties back into and then you talk about dentistry and how you saw something similar in the you know the wards and stuff like that I don't know um kind of like make it into a story you don't just like list things off because that is a very very bad way to like it just sounds really bad and the admissions team is not going to be impressed like they would be if you had a whole story going on they'll be more invested in that i know that getting work experience in these times can be hard but i do have a whole video over here that will talk about you know getting work experience in coronavirus or things that you can say that show that you have initiative you know doing things like at home composite kits and stuff like that and doing at home things all going on and um mocs or doing there are actually like whole services that go uh, beyond giving you like work experience and stuff like that there are also like webinars and people that are in the dentistry world that will you know do online work experience for you for free and stuff like that so check that video out if you're interested and it's really important to just say these things because if you don't have work experience you want to say that at least you've booked it or that you have done certain things to have a realistic appreciation of the career and that is something that they also really like to hear is that you know that you have a realistic approach to what dentistry is like that there are cons and stuff like that because they know that it's not a perfect career and they don't want you to think that it's a naive kind of decision because you're going to be doing this for a very long time for most of your life so they really want to see that you know that okay there are like things like back pain and you know stress and stuff like that so yeah they also want to see a reflection of your strengths and weaknesses so this is something really important because it shows you have self-awareness they obviously know that you're not perfect so you can't paint yourself to be perfect in every single situation on the personal statement they want you to have like some awareness show that there are some things that you're working on or skills that you're developing because that will be really important obviously don't say that you're like the bad guy don't say like really really bad stuff because if you don't have for example communication skills or even worse empathy if you don't have any empathy or like any people skills that will be really like red flag for them and there are are obviously some buzzwords that I think you should use as well but I think use them with caution because you want to add them in seamlessly you don't want them to be like all over the place and just added in just to tick them off because it will sound a lot less genuine that way things like good communication skills because you know this is very very important you need to be able to build a rapport with people that's why volunteering is really good and you can talk about how you interacted with people from all walks of life and stuff like that also leadership skills also manual dexterity team working skills empathy all of these things are really important to talk about and you can maybe include them with your work experience and your shadowing and extracurriculars and stuff like that so kind of something i've already touched on but i'll briefly go over it again is don't be afraid to use personal experiences and stuff like that but if you do do them make sure you develop it fully you don't want to just say okay like a quick sentence and then move on you want to develop it maybe like add a lot more to this flesh it out and stuff like that make it into a full paragraph with loads of like buzzwords linking it and stuff like that and then link it all back to dentistry as well some people also talk about specific things that they've researched or journals that they're reading like the bdj and stuff like that but to be honest i think this is a waste of characters pretty much every single personal statement or a lot of them at least will have said that they read the same books over and over again unless it's something that you specifically researched or you did like an epq on or something like that if you can't flesh it out more than that then i think it's just a waste of words and those words can be used elsewhere like you'll find that you'll be running out of characters in the personal statement and that's the perfect thing because you want it to be a lot more quality than quantity you want to cut out the fluff even if it's a really good work experience that you did if it, you can't develop it and if you prefer to develop another one I think that's a better way of using your characters I just want to touch on this as well as a lot of people talk about why they chose their subjects like maths chemistry bio you don't need to do that it's a waste of characters everyone knows that you've done a level like a levels to them is literally just a tick box as long as you've got your a stars or whatever they will kind of like filter people out from there so that is not necessary in your personal statement and next we're going to talk about some things that you need to make sure that you can do so that it's an impactful personal statement so i know i keep talking about how you should reflect on your work experience and stuff like that but it's really really important you have 4,000 characters and that's about 47 lines and you really need to make sure that every single line is giving the admissions team a reason that they should have you in their university if you think about it, a lot of these personal statements, especially in the competitive ones, will have shadowed a dentist, will have done some sort of hospital work experience or max facts or something like that, will have volunteered and done all of these things, and they will have also talked about communication, team working skills and stuff like that. So that's why I think talking about specific scenarios is really, really important. And trust me, from my personal experience, they will talk about this in the interview. They will pick up on these things, and that just gives you so much more to talk about. You're not thinking on the spot like, oh, like, let me answer this question. You're talking. Like, it's 
your interview kind of thing. So one of the worst things I see in personal statements is waffle. So you know, when there are wordier sentences than they should be and stuff like that, because admissions teams are getting bored. If you think about it, they have hundreds and thousands of personal statements that they are reading and you need to make sure that it's not boring. Now that's where like proofreading services and or like giving it to your like um, academic supervisors or giving it to somebody like your friend or your parents or whoever, just someone to read it and be like, okay, these words they need to get like big on. You need to be ruthless with it because you know, also that gives you more chance to talk about other scenarios and things, extracurriculars and skills that you have. And a really easy way to cut out some words as well is, you know, when you're talking about your hospital placement or something like that, you use all of these words to like explain it. You don't need to do that, you know, Royal Institute of like College of Surgeons or something like that. You don't need to do that. You literally just need to say like local hospital or something like that. And that's completely fine really for the personal statements because you're wasting so many characters just describing exactly where you were or when you were post-grad or whatever, you know, you don't need to do that. And another thing I want to touch on is a lot of people lie on their personal statement. Now, like, I understand, like, especially if you haven't had that much work experience or whatever, but they do check up on references. So I think, you know, do this with caution, um, especially in your interviews, they 100% will, like, pick up on it and ask you about scenarios and stuff like that. So kind of be prepared for this if you are going to do this. And ideally, don't do this, though. Ideally, just get the actual work experience. I think actually getting work experience is so, so underrated for um, dentistry because, or medicine as well, because you think, a lot of people think they want to do dentistry, you know, good money nine to five all of that stuff but there's a lot of things behind like who wants to look at mouths all day like honestly tell me tell me seriously um so doing work experience really honestly does give you like a realistic appreciation of it um you really realize if this is something that you want to spend the next five years studying and then even longer doing for the rest of your life and i just want to reference that video again that talks all about work experience and getting that in coronavirus it's really helpful i think you should check it out okay <laughs> With manual dexterity, I've seen it time and time again, but people say they've done their nails or like henna or like makeup or something like that, and that's manual dexterity, but that's not good enough. Like pretty much everyone has, like you have to think about it, these admission students have been there for like years and years and years and have been looking through personal statements and stuff like that. They've seen it all and you know, with these sentences, you can't really like expand on them or develop them. I think, like I have a video coming out soon as well on this, but there are loads of other things that you can like research and stuff like that. Like for example, there's like suture pads, you can get those and like say, okay, I took like an online course and you know, I've been practicing that in my spare time and stuff like that because dentists do do sutures as well um, and obviously if you're doing medicine this just makes sense um, you can also get like at-home composite kits which you like carve your own like teeth and stuff like that you can get like so many things out there nowadays especially that are at home that you don't have to go out of your house for and I think, you know, doing those things and writing about them is really interesting you can talk about, like, you know, you can relate it so much more to dentistry and stuff like that rather than doing nails and stuff like that because it's intricate work or whatever BS that you come up with <laughs> and another thing is that this is a really nice thing to talk about in interviews having these things set up for your interviews just makes it so much easier for you obviously when you're preparing and stuff like that because you don't have to like really practice more of being on the spot you're more talking about like you know things that you know very well and also another thing is make sure that you do not say that you've wanted to do dentistry or medicine since you were a young child or you know since you were in like primary school or some like stuff like that because let's be honest like that doesn't sound good that sounds like you are really naive and you haven't like really thought into the decision much or it looks like it just sounds like unrealistic let's be honest and like it never goes down with like admissions teams well so I think you know just cut that out that is not a good reason for you to want to do dentistry I want they want you to have like a realistic like you know not rose tinted glasses and stuff like that so if you are applying this year then I do do proofreading for personal statements which includes like annotating rewording and restructuring so that you can send me an email down here and we can get started straight away if you're interested um but yeah you don't need to do this honestly only if you feel like you haven't given it to enough people that you know have seen it and stuff like that and you want a fresh pair of eyes and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> so obviously i've been marking personal statements for a long time i've also talked to admissions team members as well like at my university and stuff like that so i have a lot and a lot of tips but i don't want this video to be like an hour long so i will have loads of other videos on my channel like things that you should avoid in personal statements and stuff like that so make sure you check that out i also have loads of other videos like on getting work experience and coronavirus and you know interviews and how to apply to ucas acing your a levels everything like that so make sure you check those out and subscribe if so you don't miss another video and comment down below because i always reply and i will see you